Well, the whole debanking row, the debanking scandal of myself and Coots, part of the NatWest group, it feels like this story is literally never, ever going to go away. It keeps coming back. Well, let's begin by being joined by Chris Hope, GB News' political editor. And Chris has an exclusive story on this. Um, Chris, I was, I was furious <laughs> yesterday that they've said she can get her 2.43 million, but further research shows that with the shares she's managed to accumulate since 2016, it's actually more like 11 million quid. I mean, not bad, is it? You break the law, you breach confidentiality, <laughs> you lie, and you walk out with 11 million quid. Um, and, but they've done all of this before the inquiry, before the investigation, and before delivering to me the NatWest subject access request. So where are we now with all of this? That, that's right, Nigel. Now, ministers' ears have pricked up here in London at the idea that Dame Alison Rose might get this large payoff. They're concerned about it because this inquiry by Travis Smith, this law firm, into what happened with you and, and your bank details and what was disclosed to, yeah. to the press about them, they're going to look at this closely. Now, I've been told very clearly by senior figures in the Treasury that if they find suggestions of wrongdoing, by Dame Alison Rose or other senior people um, within, within, within NatWest, then they will expect money to be docked from bonuses. It's called a malus clause. Bonus being good in Latin, malus meaning bad in Latin. A malus clause will mean that money is taken away from the settlement given to Dame Alison Rose. She's currently working on a 12-month gardening leave, um, but I think ministers are watching very closely. And of course, the government here has a special locus involving this company. They own 38% of the shares. That's you and me own 38% percent of that West therefore they are a major the biggest shareholder what they say counts so yes Nigel it's not over yet mm. No, and I did, you know, very loudly and clearly yesterday say I thought the government should act because, as you say, the government's the biggest shareholder on our behalf. I just still find it extraordinary that they can make this award to her before the result of the investigation. I find the whole thing. I think Sir Howard Davis should go, the whole board should go, frankly. Now, it seems that the mass murderer, Rose West, has a better ESG rating <laughs> with the cooperative bank uh, than I did with Coops. I, perhaps she's a climate campaigner. I, I just don't know. Um, I mean, what, what, what are well, you as an old, an old Fleet Street hack? What do you make of this story? <laughs> Well, you literally couldn't make it up. Now, uh, separate to this, the, the Telegraph newspaper revealed today that Rose West, of course, a woman who murdered 10 women and girls, was jailed in 1995 for life, is imprisoned in HMP Newhall in Yorkshire, is banked by the co-op bank, the cooperative bank, and they looked at closing her bank account details a decade ago and chose not to because of the risk, there's a problem there with uh, Rose West's daughter. The co-op, its uh, slogan is ethical now and always, Nigel. No, well, ethics, of course, must mean that you are supportive um, of drag queens reading stories to four-year-olds. Uh, and mass murder doesn't matter. Mass murder is outside the ethical well, concerns of the, of the cooperative bank. Uh, yeah, and the co-op bank, for its part, says we would not discuss individual customer account details. I mean, it, it does throw open a whole new can of worms for me. We know about politicians, people of, people of, people of note who might be risky for reputation. But what about banking criminals? What about banking prisoners? I mean, I think this is a whole space we don't know about. It's quite hard to find out because, correctly, people's bank details are held closely held privately. But this is the problem, I think. We're going towards uh -huh. what will the government do next? Will there be a right to have a bank account that you can't get taken away from you? Mm. I always wonder whether there should generally be a right to an account, it seems. We're going to, it seems the government's going towards that, possibly, in, in, in law, maybe. Yeah, Chris Hope, thank you. And I must say, I support the right for everybody to have a bank account. You know, if you've served your time in prison and come yeah. out, I think you deserve to have a bank account. Seems Chris, right. thank you ever so much.